Hey there. All right. We are live at five on a Monday. Does it look a little dark on me? Am I like in shadow? Yeah, I saw that expression you had. You had the look of the confusion. Look of I, I think the, the look of confusion, as well as other emotions, yeah. is a really good emotion for this one. Confusion in a what? Yeah, mean, being in the, a little in the dark is actually made it, maybe not a bad yeah, metaphor for how people we, feel after. This, yeah, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about being in the dark. I'm really trying to fix it, guys, and I don't know what the heck to do anymore. <laughs> is that better or worse? Uh, so... We are here with Shelly and Beth today, and I'm Alejandro. And actually, being in the dark is somewhat appropriate because being in the dark is kind of what, what I've heard from lots of people after a diagnosis of dementia. Um, and so, you know, we do want to give some consideration here before we start today's topic to really what we're going to do is hopefully provide some, some guidelines, some first steps, but we are not giving an ultimate list today. Um, because honestly, well, why team, why can't we give like an ultimate list of one, two, three, four, we're out of here in five minutes for live at five. Yeah, there's a, there is a person centered approach to pack, which unfortunately for each person then becomes a unique journey and, and right. oh, not even to mention what a hundred plus different forms, types and causes we don't have. Yeah. 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 So, so right off the bat, I mean, we do want to give consideration to here are some things that we would think would be important for the general population of people, but we are going to kind of tease some things apart as well and give some consideration to, as Beth said, there's just, you guys are human beings out there. We're human beings who are very, very complex. And if this was really easy, we would just have one DVD or one book. You guys would be done. Uh, so if you have an experience out there uh, that was good or uh, maybe not so good about a diagnosis. I mean, feel free to share it in the comments with us. Um, we'd love to hear something that went well, but all too often that's not really the case after a diagnosis. So um, I think one of the first things I'll throw out there is, you know, the, the image that I think most people have in their head of someone who is diagnosed with dementia. Hmm, what, would, what would you conjure up in your head? Because for me, I will be honest, it's still sometimes this older person. And when I mean older, I mean like 80, 90. But why is that a little bit off, Shelly and Beth, for you to think of? I was going to say that when I first started working with Alzheimer's, with the Alzheimer's Association, one of the first people I met was 50 when she had been diagnosed. And so oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's that's not accurate. <laughs> no. Yeah. So really the increase, I mean, there's an increase in probability or likelihood that, you know, someone would be diagnosed the longer that we live, right? There's just, there's just a general idea, but the idea that all older people are at, it's like, no, people are at risk. I mean, I've met some wonderful people. Our uh, whole conference last year in November was really centered around people living with dementia being a huge part of it. And there was just a wide range of human beings there uh, with a diagnosis. So I, you know, I would say my first recommendation would be, let's give some consideration to the person's age when we're considering a first step or a first couple of steps. Um, because I can certainly think about myself, you know, I'm in my late thirties at this point. And if I get a diagnosis in the next few years, I have lots of different things to consider uh, than someone who is an older person who's maybe actually retired and not actually working anymore. Mm -hmm doesn't have kids who need care. <laughs> right. um, yeah. So it, yeah, it's Cheryl, a bit different. Um, I was just going to say, Cheryl said her husband is 47 and was just diagnosed. And yep. yeah. Joanne said um, her loved one was 58. Yeah. So folks are getting diagnoses younger. I mean, people who are, I would not consider to be old at all. That's not my idea of old in my head. I mean, it was when I was 20 years ago or something, but um, so definitely considering people's age. Um, anything else, Shelly and Beth, that you guys want to throw in before we move forward on? What else do you think we could consider as being a determining factor and what I might look at to consider it a step after diagnosis? So a step after diagnosis, you're talking about not even the diagnose, diagnostic process. Yeah. Not, yeah. You, got to, you guys got to watch a whole separate video for that process, honestly. Right. I mean, that's a, yeah. Yeah, I think it, you know, in terms of um, this idea that 
and I know a lot of people that are listening are probably at a very different place in this sort of, it's not really their first steps, but it's that looking at, you know, your own experience when you're asked this sort of question, or if you're actually kind of contemplating, maybe if you're listening and you had found Tipa Snow through a friend and, and you, you yourself, or maybe your loved one, you started to realize something was going on. I think, you know, for me, in terms of looking at the diagnosis, it's, it's so different from many of the other, and I say this gently, little triggering caution here, from other terminal illnesses. Mm -hmm. And so as a cautionary, there may be somebody who's listening that doesn't actually know fully that a diagnosis, a full accurate di you know, uh, diagnosis of some form or cause or type of dementia does lead it to, by definition, being a terminal illness it's different than other terminal illnesses. And I think that there's this flurry of activity around the medical establishment with regard to support for other people with terminal illnesses, not dementias. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about this first step, you kind of get this drop off of a cliff of, well, go home and, you know, get your yourself, your, your life in order. In order and or, you know, or this, this sort of this pitying sort of way of how you're going to remove yourself from life. And I say, guys, excuse my French, but that is baloney. And this idea that at 58, at 68, at 78, when I get a diagnosis, I'm going to stop my life. No. So this idea of the expectations, maybe the first step is kind of figuring out what is actually working and what is not. So I don't know at that point that I could do that alone. Right. You know, that idea of who are my allies, who are my friends, who are the people that care about me that may also be grieving too, but starting to take pause you bet because, because you've got two really huge ones. Yeah. And, you know, I wish we could tell you guys like, you know, we spent hours and hours building these things. And Beth and I talked about it's like, no, but Beth definitely has, you have two, one thing for sure, Beth, that was on my list of consideration. But one of the things you, you brought up is let's check in on what's going well, Yeah. because this idea of a diagnosis does not mean, okay, I need to completely flip everything that's been happening. Because if you've been moving along, there have, must have been some things that are still going okay, no matter what age you, you've been involved with, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, things aren't okay at work anymore, but at home, it's still actually pretty fine. I'm doing well there. Or I could even take that box of being at home and break it up even more to go, yeah, mornings are really pretty good. Afternoons is when it gets tough for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that idea of figuring out what's going well is totally in that pack belief box of there's got to be some stuff that's going okay we're going to keep that and we're going to change the other components that aren't going as well yeah it's um, a very occupational therapy approach is this idea of you know maybe my solace is going out to my workshop maybe my solace is going and, and doing my quilting but where i'm having trouble is where i got lost coming home from the grocery store or where i'm having difficulties with word finding or i'm now getting really short with my husband mm -hmm. or you know Though that idea of what is working, what's not, I, I really like that. Really kind of taking stock and finding some ways to recenter yourself because this really pulls at identity, doesn't it? Yeah. And the other piece you were going into was the idea, Beth, of I've got to start like talking to someone. I've got to talk through some of this, or I've got to also recognize where I am in this, in this grief and loss thing, because if I've gotten the diagnosis, you know, and I'm, I'm putting myself in that that pair of shoes, mm -hmm. then it's like, yeah, I know I'm going to have a sense of grief and loss as a human being, but who else might be in that mix? So, you know, often Tifa has talked about, and, and lots of our pack speakers have talked about this idea of building a team, um, you know, and that for some of us introverts, uh, it's, it's a little scary, to be honest. I mean, that idea of, you know, I made someone else for more support. Um, but the idea of who's going to be that person for me, who's going to be that person. I'm actually okay with having these really kind of crappy, probably conversations with, and sometimes they're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, because I know for me, there are some people who I absolutely not want to do that with. And there are other people where I, I honestly, I'm not just saying it Beth, because you're here, but you're one of the people in PAC who I'm okay having kind of an uncomfortable conversation with at this point. Yeah. Um, 
really because I think you'll be able to give me some good viewpoints on it. That's, you know, I value that. So yeah, finding find that, your and I think, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think more of the common recommendation is find a support group. And it's like, yeah, support groups can be great, but <laughs> there are some other ways to get support out there as well that may not feel as much of a, as like a, like a homework piece for some people or is really draining. Well, that, that brings you, and I want to pause because I think um, Shelly was reading some good comments, but I think that where you find your support may be very different. So that may be going back to that first one that we talked about is finding your strengths. So if in the past, you know, going on what worked for you is so critical. So for example, uh, my father, he's the type of guy that when you go through a museum, he has to read every placard and he just, um, you know, when he gets a new tool, he reads the directions. And I've always that admired him because I'm just like, oh, turn it on. Let's see what happens. But so if that is your strength, then maybe an education based support group is the way for you. Mm -hmm. um, and he did really well by going to the for his cancer diagnosis. It was going and finding the support group that also had an educational component because he could read and get information and that that fed his soul and it fed his brain. And for me, I think it would be a lot more of the well, I don't want to read necessarily anything. Maybe I'll watch some video because it feels a little more active, but I'm just going to give this a try. And that idea that we can't escape ourselves and who we are, right. it's only gonna just distill us necessarily. And it's more of an essence of who we are and go with it, you know? Right. Do what you need to do. Shelly, you bring in some things in over there? Yeah, well, I'm just, there've been some really, uh, Laura, Laura Henry was just saying about what the way her doctor told her mom about it. And it's just like oh. horrible, you know, he just, she didn't have any time to prepare for her and, and it just, and he basically said, I'm just telling her with no yeah. preparation. And, and again, that, that's a whole nother conversation we can have about how you get, how you're told about the diagnosis versus what you do after you get that. And, and I know we have so many stories of how hard it's been or what happened when they got, how hard it was to get diagnosed and then what happened. So um, yeah, there's just some interesting comments and I would just say, read through that. But I, I was also listening to what you're saying, Beth, and I agree. It depends on you as to what kind of support you need, because, you know, I might turn instead of going to, I like education stuff and I do read all the stuff, but I might have turned to my church yeah. because I have a strong faith and I want to find somebody else in my church organization that is dealing with or working with this and maybe maybe it's an opportunity to create a support group at a church um which is actually kind of what happened <laughs> over time that's a really great avenue you know yeah. so it's just it's it's i think the other piece is for us all to think about who truly who do we have that we can turn to yeah. and realize we're not alone no matter what even if you you live by yourself and you think you have nobody that is not true right yeah yeah, it's 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 about finding finding the the person or the group potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so so I'll, I'll I'll throw up one last kind of broader piece here, which is Beth mentioned. You know what's going well, and I would also say what's going well, and how do you like to spend your time as a human being? Um, and in PATH, we like to think about you know we have time that's productive where it gives me value. Whatever the things I'm doing give me value. Um, but also some things that may be leisurely and fun, and sometimes those go together. I mean, I don't consider a lot of the work I do for PAC as like job. I consider it as like I get lots of value and, and it happens to bring a paycheck, but it, it's also kind of leisurely to be on here with, with folks and learn things. Mm -hmm. Then also how I'm taking care of myself, wellness and self-care, but also restorative calm time um, or recharge time because some people's recharge time actually doesn't seem as calm as some other people's. Um, but giving to some consideration to how we're going to fill that time if things are going to really change. Mm -hmm. um, because the idea of moving when I've got a diagnosis is I want to make sure that if I have to get to that point, my time is filled because that last fifth time category that Tipa brings up is wait time. Mm -hmm. And right now with no dementia diagnosis, man, I, I absolutely cannot stand wait time. I will fill every little nugget of my time with something. Mm -hmm. That brings me either joy or purpose and value. Mm -hmm. And the turning to look at that, and how do we do that? Um, I know I need to take care of myself, but if Beth is going to come into my space and tell me it's time to go work out and exercise, boy, she better be ready for a fight. Um, she may need to do something else. She's going to support me. 
because I'm only going to really want to do exercise when it's actually giving me purpose or value. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hidden. The exercise is kind of hidden. You know, it's yard work. It's, it's, you know, helping people paint. It's whatever that thing is. That's my exercise. Ooh, Alejandro, would you, would you go on and walk with me? You know, I, I would. Are we going to get some ice cream uh, on the end or something? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll find something along the way. <laughs> yeah. If we're going to stop. If it, yeah. Shelly, if you're going to get me on a walk, you better have a point of, of <laughs> stopping and getting something. No, like I <laughs> But, but truly figuring out how we're going to fill time, because that is one of the biggest things that I've heard from people living with dementia that I've gotten a chance to interact with is yeah. I've got to find a different way to fill my time now mm -hmm. um, because things sometimes change after a um, diagnosis of dementia. Um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, some good things though that come. I mean, some of the folks that we know have developed art skills or they've, they've found poetry and didn't know that they could write. And, you know, and they've done things that they never would have tried before because they were afraid or they didn't have time or whatever. But now, like, hey, I'm trying something new. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very yeah. cool. So and that maybe is bad is what I'm trying to say. No, yeah. yeah. And that, no, and that sure. may be actually a really good question is how are you doing emotionally? And that one we cannot deny the grief and loss and those feelings of role change and loss mm -hmm. along those lines, especially for folks who are younger or for folks who haven't, they're in retirement and they have found whole new purpose and meaning in life. And do I feel like I need to give up those roles? So mm -hmm. that idea that recognizing if you just heard what Shelly said of, you know, there's really some strangely silver linings that can come from this very dark cloud. But if you're, hearing that sentence. And for you, it is a, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Right. Anger reaction. Yeah. Then maybe it's time to really take a pause and say, I'm going to need some help because with this may also come depression. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, you know, I mentioned earlier on in the, in the, is this a broadcast? Can I call it? I feel like that's yeah. Um, yeah. Not a broad, we're a broadcast. Broadcast. Yeah, broadcast. Earlier on in the session, in the broadcast, um, I mentioned, you know, kind of my, and definitely four years ago before I came into PATH, my my vision of someone living with dementia in my head, my image, right, in my own Google search was older person, but that's not true. And so, yes, it is there, but we have younger people that are diagnosed. And actually, we have a whole core team in PATH that work alongside of us um, and that we truly learn a huge amount from. So, Shelly, I don't know if you have the link, maybe we could share to the core team page or a core team page. Yeah. Yeah, Shelly to work there. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, and if you're interested, if you have been recently diagnosed and want to see what folks are doing or, or hear from them, I mean, there are videos and there are images and there are things that have been, uh, you know, spoken by them and written by them that are on those pages. So check it out for sure. And if you want to interact with some of these folks that are on our core team, check out one of our champion days. They're running every Friday. Uh, we had three core team members last last week, and it was it was good fun. Um, our champion courses are are running monthly, uh, or weekly actually, and then also on our trainer courses and consulting courses, we do our we try our very best to get a core team member there. Uh, usually, can do it for a day or at least out of the three day course. So and there's a conference again this year, and we have a conference where yeah, people living with dementia will be there virtually be, with us. They will be partnered with every speaker that we have so every single session there will be somebody living with dementia as well as yeah. one of us yeah what is it the uh australia alzheimer's dementia action alliance or one of those i i feel so bad i can't think which one it is but the the motto is nothing about me without me yeah yeah and you know that is a wonderful pathway forward for so many folks and for some of you i i don't want to be part of that you know that's that there that's not the thing that's the balance and pack. It is trying to support the person where they're at. And I'm not talking about people living with dementia only. I'm talking about all of us. So we hope that that will also be a piece where, you know, finding your core friends. And I know a lot of friends that I've only met after di after their diagnosis, which yeah. is just kind of even funnier. So there is life after diagnosis, as my friends say. Mm -hmm. For sure. Anyway, well, thank you so much, Shelly and Beth, for, for joining us today. Um, if you have questions out there, please keep dropping them in. We're, we're fishing questions out and we're getting questions even now from TIPA's webinars and things that we're trying to throw in. So throw it out there. Let us know what you need for support. 
um, whether you're living with dementia or not, we're, we're here for you and we'll see you guys again at five tomorrow. Bye. Bye guys. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help us spread Teeps' positive approach message around the world. And don't forget to click the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.